Wouldn't it be nice if you could take one dollar and turn it into so much more? Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And as the intro showed you, I'm a terrible magician, but I can at least teach you how to make more money as a developer. Your programming skills are incredibly valuable, and there are so many more ways to make money than you realize. Getting a job is not the only way. So in this video, I'm going to walk through some of the most popular ways to make more money as a developer, starting with the easiest and most common, and moving on to the harder, more advanced techniques at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around all the way till the end. And if you want to dive even further into how to make money as a programmer, Florin has a great book that he's currently working on. I'll link down in the description for you to check out. It may not be released yet, but you can still pre-purchase it, and I highly recommend you check it out. So the first technique I've already kind of alluded to a little bit is with a normal job. But there are ways to take your job and actually make more money from it than you would if you just go in and do your job day in and day out. Probably the easiest way to get paid more is to negotiate a higher salary when you're first getting a job. And this can also even be applied to when you already have a job, whether it's looking for a new job or just negotiating at the job you're currently at to get a raise or a promotion. But specifically when we're talking about getting your first job or getting a new job, generally when they give you a salary, this salary is not going to be their maximum that they're willing to pay you. They don't want to pay you that maximum. They have a range generally. Let's say they want to pay you anywhere between fifty dollars and $60,000. That's their range. And they're probably going to start their offer out at $50,000 because most people, when they get an offer, especially for their first job, they just immediately take it with no negotiation. And I recommend that you negotiate your salary. Just at the very least, throw back a different number, try to negotiate something. And whether or not you negotiate salary numbers, negotiate vacation time, maybe negotiate benefits of some form, try to negotiate something because the company always has some wiggle room. They generally have a pay scale they try to keep people within and they want to start you as low as possible. So negotiating is a great way to try to bump yourself up on that pay scale to a slightly higher tier. And even if you're afraid of doing this, you think maybe they're going to take the job away from me, Generally, the worst thing that they're going to do is say no to your negotiation, but you may be surprised that they're willing to accept your negotiation. I know for the very first job that I applied to and the very first job I got out of college, I negotiated my salary up by about 12% increase from what they originally offered me. So that's a huge way to bump up your salary because that 12% increase was a significant increase in my salary, which meant every year going forward when I got raises or promotions or whatever it was, it was based off of that initial salary I had. So if I got a 20% raise, I also got that 20% on the additional 12% I got starting with. So if I, for example, was making $100,000 and I negotiated up to $112,000, now when I get a raise of 20%, 112, 20% of that is much higher than 20% of just 100,000. So it really compounds on itself as you go through your career. So it's really important, especially for your first job, to try to negotiate a higher salary. And if you have another job offer as well, that's perfect because even if the worst case scenario, nightmare situation happens where you try to negotiate, you give them back a different number or just try to start a negotiation and they immediately shut you down and take back their offer, which is honestly pretty unlikely. I've never heard of that really happening. But if it does, you at least have a backup job option. Also, if a company immediately rescinds their offer as soon as you try to negotiate a little bit your starting salary, generally it's not really a company that you want to work for because they're trying to lowball you as hard as possible and they don't really appreciate their employees themselves. So you don't really want to work for a company like that because the next best way to make more money as a developer besides switching jobs, which is what most people do, is working for a company that will value their employees and give them raises instead of forcing the employee to switch jobs every couple years. Because as an employee, the best way to get paid more is to go to a different company that's going to give you a 20% raise to hire you. And the reason that this happens is because when you work for a company, most of the time they're going to give you, you know, a 3%, 4% raise maybe every year to keep up with inflation. And they're not going to give you those big pay jumps. But when you're a starting junior developer and you're moving into that junior to like mid-level developer, those couple years of that process, your worth increases drastically each year. So that's why a lot of people jump jobs to get that worth increase. But you can also try negotiating at the job you're at saying, you know, I've worked here for two years. I've really increased my skills from when I started to where I am now. I really feel like I'm worth quite a bit more than you're paying me. And I could go get another job, you know, that's paying me higher, but I really enjoy working here and I'd really like to get, you know, extra pay here if possible. You can try to negotiate that pay raise with your company. And a lot of times this is something that'll work because a company hates losing employees. It's very expensive to hire and train someone. 
and it's usually much cheaper just to give someone a raise as opposed to going out and hiring a brand new employee. And that right there is probably about enough talk about jobs. We're all pretty familiar with how to do jobs and negotiation and salaries. So the next thing I want to move on to is freelancing. And freelancing is very similar to working a job, but now you have to take on your own clients and manage some business aspects on your own. And something you'll notice about these different ways to make money is the first few that I talk about are very low risk and you have very little management or business related tasks that you need to take on and you're pretty much spending your whole day coding. But as I go down this list and some of the more advanced techniques, you're going to notice that some of them start to involve more business techniques, less time coding, and they're a little bit more risky. Freelance is a little bit more risky than just working a job, especially if you just quit your job and try to go cold turkey into freelance. I really don't recommend doing that. But freelance is a little bit more risky because you have clients, you need to manage them, you have your own business. But there's an upside where you can grow your income much quicker because you get to charge your own rates. You essentially make your own salary. So if you're really good and really quick at freelancing, you can make a lot more money than you would working for a normal company. Another great thing about freelancing that makes it really low risk is you can start freelancing on the side a few hours a week while working a full-time job and slowly grow your freelancing business on the side while working a comfortable, safe job. That way you never have that period where you're really risking it all on freelancing because you're slowly building it up until the point where it can take over your full-time job and you can transition fully over to freelance work. And if you want a complete guide on freelancing, I'm not really the expert in this field, but Kyle Prinsloo has an entire course on freelancing. I'm going to have linked in the description below. It's a great course and goes over everything you need to know about getting started in freelancing. So I highly recommend that course. Now, moving on from freelancing, we have another topic, which is really similar to freelancing in the amount of risk and the amount of reward you can get from it. And this is one-on-one -on -one mentoring or coaching. And this is a great thing for you to take on. You can do this even as a beginner, as long as you know more than the person that you're trying to teach or coach. And sometimes a beginner or, you know, more beginner person is much better at teaching someone that's brand new because they remember what it's like to go through those struggles. For me, it's a lot harder for me to teach people very intro level programming because it's been a while since I was an intro level programmer. And someone that's really advanced 30 years senior developer, they're going to really struggle to teach that intro level stuff while you, as maybe a more beginner, have that knowledge. You really recently went through it. so You have much more skills to give to them in teaching them these different concepts. So you don't have to be an expert to be on one-on-one -on -one coach or mentor. It helps to know more than the person you're teaching, and that's all you need to know. And this, just like with freelance, you can do on the side, build up your client base, and build. eventually, maybe you can even switch to doing it full-time. But generally, this one-on-one -on -one mentoring technique is not something that people do full-time because your skills you need to develop as you're going on, and if all you're ever doing is teaching, it's hard for you to constantly develop new skills. But if you build a reputation as a great teacher, great mentor, great coach, it's definitely something you could 100% move over to doing full time and make a great living off of. Now, the next category I want to move on to is going to be a much higher risk category. And these all generally involve starting your own business of some form, which means that you're going to have to give up a lot of coding time. You're still going to code plenty, but you have to manage a lot of business management email related tasks. So if this is not something you really enjoy doing, I highly recommend not dealing with these business related ways of making money because if you're not business minded, at least somewhat enjoy the business tasks, you're going to hate half of your work and that is just not a good way to live. But the upside to starting your own business is you can grow it infinitely. There really is no ceiling. All that really matters is the amount of effort you put in and the value you can provide for someone else. That's really important. This goes with almost everything, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, freelancing, your job, your business. The more value you can create, the more money you make. The big difference though is at a job, it doesn't matter how much value you provide, you pretty much get paid the same thing because you're stuck on a salary. It doesn't matter if you make the company $10 million or $1 million, they still pay you your salary. That's it. But when it comes to your business, if your business makes $10 million, you made $10 million. If it makes $1 million, you make $1 million. So it's very dependent on the value you provide. So the more hard work and effort you put in, generally the more money you can make. But like I said, it requires a lot of work and a lot of things that are not coding related. There is also a lot of risk involved with starting your own business, so I want to give you a few different types of businesses you could start, starting with some of the lower risk categories, and then moving all the way up into the higher risk categories, and generally the higher risk, the higher reward, the lower risk, the lower reward. So the lowest risk category you can start is starting something like a YouTube channel, a blog, maybe creating some courses, put them up on Udemy. These are pretty low risk to start because you can do them in your spare time. They don't really cost any money or very much money at all. You know, it won't cost you more than $10, $15 a month at the most to start one of these platforms, such as blogging, YouTube, or courses. 
And the great thing about them is that they can grow while you're working a full-time job. That's what I did for my YouTube channel. I worked a full-time job for about a year and a half during the beginning of my YouTube channel until eventually I had my YouTube channel that was making enough that I could quit my full-time job after about two years of doing my YouTube channel. And the best part is that my expenses were really low. You know, it was like $10 a month when I was starting, so it really didn't cost me anything except for my time. And by putting in the effort and dedication, I was able to grow my YouTube channel to where it is now, and the point where it replaced my full-time job. So these are great avenues to make extra money on the side, but you have to also enjoy the aspect of teaching or writing, whatever it is you do. If you're making a blog just to make money and you hate writing, it's going to be terrible, you're going to burn out, you're going to hate it, and it's not going to work. Same thing with the YouTube channel. If you're doing this just to make money, you're going to be sorely disappointed on how little ads actually pay you, and you're going to realize that you don't enjoy the work itself. You need to really enjoy the business side of thing or the non-coding side of things that you're diving into. So content creation is one aspect. It's a fairly low-risk business, and it can be pretty high reward, but it's going to take a lot of time. The next thing that you can dive into is more of a software as a service type of business where you're building an actual physical or digital product that you're trying to sell. This is definitely in the high risk category because it's very easy to fail. You need to not only have the right product, you need to have the right timing, you need to have the right marketing, you need to have a pretty healthy dose of luck. And a lot of times this is going to cost some serious money if you're trying to break into a big market. You can't just go up and compete with Amazon without bringing some serious capital, some serious effort, and some serious time. So unless you're trying to break into a small niche topic and market, you're going to need some extra capital, maybe some venture capital or whatever it is, you're going to need a lot of extra effort and or money depending on the market you're breaking into. And like I said, the risk is incredibly high. It's very common for people to fail these types of businesses because they require so much effort and so much work, it's really easy to burn out. And even if you do everything right, you still need to get at least some level of luck in order to be successful. The big benefit of a SaaS business or something like this is these scale to be huge. I mean, just take a look at Amazon or Google. I mean, billions of dollars going through these businesses. And obviously, if you're starting your own SaaS company, it's not going to be that large. It's okay, though. Who really needs a billion dollar company? No one. No one needs that much money. But you can grow this into a huge income, much more than you could ever make at a full time job. But like I said, it's going to require so much more effort, has a lot higher chance of failing. And it's one of those things that's sometimes really hard to do on the side while you're doing a full time job because they require so much effort and dedication. So a lot of times when people try to create these SaaS companies, what they'll do is maybe start it on the side. But once it starts to pick up steam, they really need to have a good, healthy amount of savings so that they can quit their job and really go full time on it. That's one of the best ways that I see people creating these types of businesses. So if I had to recommend a path for you to take, I would say 100% start with a job, negotiate a salary, try to get the highest salary that you can. Even if you already have a job, start there. Then if you really enjoy coding, you don't really enjoy business or other parts of you know marketing, then go with freelancing if you want to move on past your job. Because freelancing is you know 90% code, 10% business. So you can spend so much more time on coding and a lot less time on marketing and networking and such that you don't enjoy. And if you really don't enjoy those things, don't move on past freelancing and maybe don't even move on past a normal job because you can make a lot of money on just a normal development job just by switching around and finding the right companies that will pay you for what you're worth. But if you enjoy the business minded side of things, and you enjoy taking a little bit of a risk, dive into one of these other options of building your own business, whether it's a content creation business on YouTube or blogging or a full blown next level SaaS company. It's really up to you. And if you want to learn more about making money as a programmer, I highly recommend you check out Florian's book. He's currently working on a book all about this, which dives into all of these topics and so much more in great depth. So check out the link down in the description below where I'm going to put the book. It may not be released yet at this time, but you can still pre-purchase it and check the book out for yourself. I've been looking through the rough draft of what he has, and it's really quite impressive. So I highly recommend you check it out. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day.